Hi, this is Josh Kolb. We are learning Daf Shvui. Uh, we are on Masechet Bava Kama, Daf Nun Tet. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the story that appears on this Daf about Eliezer Zeira, literally little Eliezer, uh, and just a little bit about the artistry of Tamida Agada, and maybe a few comments on how to read Tamida Agada stories, legends in the Talmud. Okay. So the, the story begins, Eliezer Zeira, Havasayim uh, Misayne Uchame Bekai Veshuki Dinahardeh. So Eliezer Zeira was wearing black shoes, and he was there in the um, marketplace of Nahardea, a Babylonian city. Uh, and the heads of the uh, Reish Galuta, the exarch, the people from his house, came to him. This is like the, uh, I don't know, the head honchos or his his uh, entourage, if you will. Why are you wearing these? And like, the, so the first point is, Talmudic Agata, when it tells you the color of the shoes that somebody's wearing, obviously that means that it is important to know the color of the shoes. So when, as soon as you see these wearing black shoes, you're gonna have to say, well, it must be relevant, and now we're gonna see the relevance. So they come and ask him, why are you wearing these shoes? And he says to them, I'm mourning Jerusalem. Now, Eliezer Zeira lives probably, let's say, 250 to 300 years after the destruction of the temple. It's not that it's illegitimate to be mourning the temple such a long time afterwards. It's just that there are legitimate ways uh, already have been developed in Judaism, such as leaving the corner of your house unpainted. Uh, today we do, uh, uh, like, we break the... Um, the glass at a wedding to reduce our simcha a little bit. Of course, we still mourn on Tisha B'Av and in other fasts, but we don't all wear black all the time because of the destruction of the temple. Clearly, that's going a little bit overboard. And they say to him, are you important enough to mourn over Jerusalem? Meaning they're a little worried about their social standing. You, Little Eliezer, literally, that's what his name means, Little Eliezer, think that you're important enough to mourn Jerusalem? Savor Yuhara Hava. They thought that it was religious aggregates, and they put him in jail, which sounds extreme to be putting somebody in jail for simply being arrogant. Now, I don't think this story is meant to be taken literally. I don't think that there were literally people putting other people into jail in the Talmudic period for wearing black Jews and mourning, excessively mourning over Jerusalem. But you have to admit that showing up other people in your religious behavior can be undermining to them, especially if you're a peon and they are people of great importance. Uh, you can just think about your own lives. If somebody who is not generally considered that important or not generally considered to be that religious takes on some giant stringency and decides that he's going to take his stand here and show off how he was religious here, other people might question, like, who are you to be asking, acting, uh, uh, acting excuse me, in this way? So that's what happens. And he responds to them, I think, with a delicious irony, one of my favorite lines in the Talmud, Amar lahu gavra rabba'ana, I am a great man. Meaning, religious arrogance is not combated by humility. Religious arrogance is combated by the person saying it was justified. What you think was unjustified is not unjustified because I indeed am a learned scholar. So now they have this whole discussion about uh, um, uh, how smart he is, etc. and I don't want to get into that. But just a couple other notes about the lessons I think we can learn from the story. First of all, the characters of the heads of the, um, the people from the house of the Exilarch, not necessarily the heads of the people of the house of the Exilarch. Ironically, I think they're acting religiously arrogant and not him. Right. He is doing something that nobody else does, but he has something to back it up. They are acting religiously arrogant by assuming that they're more important than him just because he's only this little unknown guy. Evidently, he's unknown. That's why they, they say, who are you to wear those black shoes? Which shows you, you really can't judge somebody by looking at them. Right. What somebody looks to be acting religiously arrogant and you accuse them of being arrogant, you are making the mistake, not them. Right. That's, I think, the most important thing I sort of glean from this. The other is that um, arrogance isn't always wrong. It's not 
improper for Eliezer Zeira to be acting arrogant in this way because he has something to back it up. In other words, he is indeed somebody whose behavior externally is worthy of who he is internally. Um, but that's only something he can know. They don't know that. Right? You, as a, an observer, always should, to, should observe people with generosity and judge them with generosity. Uh, and it's only for uh, a person himself or herself to judge whether they're acting arrogant. It's not for the arrogance police. It's for somebody else. So that's a little bit of what I learned from this story. I think it's a really interesting story. There's a lot of interplay here between the, the role of the House of the Exilarch, um, both this and a previous part of the DAF, the page, seem to be sort of mocking, if you will, the House of the Exilarch, which is not uncommon in Talmudic literature.